Hey YouTube, Editor Mark here. I uh, just wanted to let you know that the video I'm editing right now uh, was filmed at night, so the image is a little bit muddy and we're getting a little bit of noise in the audio. But we are improving our uh, hardware and software setup in the near future, so things should improve. But uh, nevertheless, Chris and I had a good conversation, so enjoy. Bill C-244 to the Standing Committee on Industry and Technology. On December 5th, 2022, Open Media testified before the House of Commons Standing Committee of Industry and Technology on the potential impact of a private member's right to repair enabling bill, Bill C-244. Our message was simple, Bill C-244 is a necessary first step to ensuring that all Canadians have full ownership rights over their devices to repair them sustainably and affordably. Okay, so this is an organization. Hmm. Oh, there we go. Yeah, C-244. An act to amend the Copyright Act, Diagnosis, Maintenance, and Repair. So it's a private member's bill by Wilson Miao from Richmond Centre. At consideration in committee in the House of Commons. So this was... So it came in uh, latest activity October 5th, 2022. Okay, so that's, I guess, that's the latest activity in Parliament. Now, let's oh. see, compare that what they have going on in the States. U.S. lawmakers introduce right to repair bills to spur competition. Representative Bobby Rush, a Democrat, said Thursday it introduced legislation to ensure vehicle owners and independent repair shops have equal access to repair and maintenance tools as automakers and dealerships. So I don't know, this guy's in... Reg uh, legislation. To not repair your own vehicle? No, to be, oh, to be allowed. to be allowed. Okay. Yeah, because it's been slowly being uh, eroded there, especially right. by John Deere. Um, yeah. <clears throat> it's a silly law. I mean, if, if you know, they want to own the vehicle, they can lease it to you, they can fix it. Yeah. If <clears throat> they want to sell you something, and under the premise that it's good, and it works, and it's whatever, it's got warranty, and then after that it's your problem, you know, then it's your problem. Yep. Right. I mean, that's how the industry works. So I, I think, I think they should continue letting us repair our own stuff. Yeah, but the thing is, it's a little bit like the the whole DRM thing with software, where they're making it difficult to get the tools to repair things, and they wouldn't let people, or they void warranty of well, people who would uh, reset the computers after they had done something like kind of like the equivalent of the whole oil change BMW yeah, like thing. But for a long time now. For a long time now, the other one of the manufacturers have continued to make it difficult. Yeah. Um, I, I, that doesn't mean that they're going to make it easy for us to repair our own vehicles or whatever, or, or, or for shops to, to to have all the tools available. They're we're, they're going to have to continue to adapt the way they have to repair their own vehicles, mm -hmm. uh, or, or to repair the repair the cars the way they have. But taking away the right to repair your vehicle is a completely different story. Well, yeah. there's no law to take away a right. Yeah. It's just well, it's it's a. Oh yeah, they're trying, but they're not using laws. They're, well, or I mean, they may be trying to use laws, but most of this is just John Deere saying we void your warranty if you open yes, like a fucking whatever, whatever part of the and, and, and I think, I think to some extent, I understand John Deere's side of it, where they say, look, we don't want something who's unqualified, especially while the vehicle's under a vehicle or equipment is under warranty, mm -hmm. working on it because you know we're going to have to put the bill for that if you screw it up. So I, I appreciate that element of it, but that's not any different than any other warranty. Right. Right? Like, if, if you go and tamper with it, like, I go pull my motor apart and go, well, it's making a noise, and here's the piston, and you guys figure it out. And that's not the way it works. It's not warranty at that point. It becomes, it, it, it becomes uh, you know, I took it apart, and I didn't know what was wrong, and, you know, it, it's not fixed, and now you fix it. And I don't think it's only a warranty thing, though, because no. the, uh, because it became more, it became more. Uh, yeah, well, they just keep like it starts with the warranty thing, and like say the, the beginning steps of that are reasonable. But have you ever known a corporation with enough money? No, right? So yeah, they're always right. going to find a new way to, to, to grab some sort of market share, and I, I, that must be why Kubota has gained the, the market share that it has. But, but te Tesla is not much different in that respect. Like I think oh, exactly. Tesla, in terms of automotive manufacturers right now, are probably the worst at allowing consumers to repair their own product. Yep. Uh, you know, and and it's. I think it's unreasonable to think that the cars are never going to require service, or that somebody's not going to be able to, you know, service a brake caliper. But that's been the same brake caliper since you know 1972. Yeah. Um, 
and, and do that correctly. I think that's just um, it's fabricated economy kind of thing, right? Where they say, okay, well, you know, we, you know, we don't want them servicing it because we make money off a break job, and you know, you're gonna have to bring it to a Tesla. But the problem is, specifically with Tesla, that you know, they they really want you to buy the Kool Aid, and they want they want to control the cup that you're drinking it in. Uh, they, they want to charge you what they think is reasonable for the cup, and then uh, they want to charge you what they think is reasonable for the Kool-Aid and for the people who are serving it, yeah. which, by the way, are going to be Tesla people as well. And, and and I think there's, you know, in terms of service, you could say that they're probably trying to control the service level, but in reality, the service at Tesla is terrible. You don't you don't hear a lot of people saying, you know what, I have a Tesla and it's. It's great. You do when they, hear, you know, they're new or, or they haven't had any problems. They haven't had to make their way to the dealership. Yeah. But you hear lots of people saying, "Hey, my car's had to go, you know, three hours away for service, and you know, uh, they don't have my parts in stock, and I'm sitting here with no Tesla." On my car, right? So I think I think that's that's a big part of you know, and, and if the reality of it was that the parts were more open, open source, right? I have access to brake pads and rotors regular shop, well, you know, that could be fixed locally, maybe even faster, right? Oh, uh, yeah. You know, and, and there's nothing stopping Tesla from making more money by putting in little certifications if they want certified people working on a Tesla, but it hasn't been the industry, you know? I no, they want the, the whole uh, the whole kit and caboodle, which it... The fact that it's considered a separate thing from auto mechanics kind of makes sense because the, the, the drivetrain is completely different. Yeah. But, like I say, the brakes are the same thing, door hinges are the same thing, interior lighting and all that stuff. Regulators, be, door handles, yeah, that's mirrors, all the, all the same shit. I mean, it's 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 not different that way. And, and so, um, yeah, I don't understand why they... Well, I do understand it. They're just trying to get suck every penny out of it. Yeah. But, I mean, if you finance a Tesla, it's probably Tesla finance. If you haven't serviced, it's going to the Tesla dealership. You know what? Yeah. I guess if you like that ecosystem, like if I, I, I think you could draw a direct line to the people who like Teslas and Macs, right? So, so, yeah. <laughs> so, so you know, you like Mac, you like the ecosystem, you like the fact that you're buying your stuff from Mac and that it's going to work, and you're willing to pay a premium for that. Fine. And it's the same thing with your Tesla, right? Yeah, you, you, you're buying that ecosystem like it, uh, you like paying a premium, you like driving a premium product and paying a premium for it, you really don't have a problem with the fact that you're going to change your vehicle eight, every eight years. You might not. You might say at eight years I'm going to spend the value of the vehicle replacing the batteries and that somehow makes sense to you. Yeah. I think somebody's going to take the 24 grand it costs to repair the batteries on a freaking car and just go buy another car, which means that to me there's a faster replacement cycle of these electric cars that you're paying a premium for. And I think Okay, getting a little bit off right to repair in that conversation, but realistically, it's even faster in terms of cycle if the batteries are broken and the car had other repairs that are not cost effective to do, right? Like, it, it doesn't let you balance your your um, your business case to keep the car anymore, right? right? Somebody else is controlling that business case. And, and that's where things go off the rails a little bit, especially if you own it. And I think, yeah. I think, I think, I think if if, if there is no right to repair, then that means they lease it. And that means you agree to pay a set cost until it's fully depreciated, until, you know, you turn the key, it doesn't start, they don't want to fix it, and you don't want to pay for it anymore, and then something else is replacing it, right? Yeah, well, at that point, it becomes almost like uh, a rideshare service. Right. Right, you're kind, of, you're kind of renting the vehicle at that point. Well, I think, in general, um, like, well, if we get a, in kind of around the right to repair. Mm -hmm. They're trying to they're trying to make you not own stuff. Yep. They they want it so that you never own anything. That you just make a payment and that there's this economy around something. It's yep. good enough in terms of value and quality. And, and if you want to own it they make you pay, right? You have that's to go right. get uh, four hundred dollar oil changes and right. you buy eight hundred dollar a piece tires. Right. It'd be cheaper if you leased it. Yep. Right? Right? That, that's that's the case they're gonna that, that's the case they're gonna make and, and I mean uh, once cars are fully autonomous I can fully see um, you know you're never gonna own the car basically people are gonna you're gonna show up 
you're actually you're not going to show up. The car is going to show yep. up. <laughs> and and, and uh, you know, uh, it's not going to be a car you own. It's going to be a car that community owns because they're going to, you know, they're going to water that down too. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, then, then we're going to have it so that multiple people own the car. And hey, if you have more money and you want a Rolls Royce or Mercedes Benz, there'll be a luxury autonomous car that pulls up. You just make a higher payment, and there's your car. Yep. And that's I, I really see it going that way uh, if if they get their own way. It's it's almost a shame that that's the position they're taking because if if that was is this the place? Oh, you're yeah. like the five. If um, as an option, that's totally fine, right? Some people yeah. may really benefit from that in the same way that people benefit from the uh, like zip car, or whatever those things right. are called. But they're trying to make that the only game in town. Yes. Yeah. Right. And then if someone poo poos that, they say, "Oh, you're against progress and automated this and that and blah blah blah." And well, no, it, it can exist. But don't charge people through the nose or sue them for trying to do it the old way either, because there's nothing right. wrong with that. Right. I mean, I mean, clearly, ride uh, ride sharing makes money. Yeah. And, and that's why they're doing it. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it. Again, it's it's a business. Yeah. So so if if they're they're um, they're they're ride sharing and it's not making money, nobody's doing ride sharing. Uh, nobody's doing car sharing. I should say it's called right. car sharing. Right. Car sharing. Yeah. But the market does respond, right? I mean, I think that's uh, the way Teslas behave, which makes sense for a small company, but I think they've grown past the point where they can do the, the whole boutique thing. Yeah. But I think that's where, as they've grown and had these kind of growing things, I think that's why companies like Lucid are gaining a lot of, uh, a lot of traction. There's another one that just opened up. There's a boutique in Toronto that just opened up recently for electric car as well. And oh, yeah. it's, it's another one. It's another... Okay. Well, I know the... Um, the, I think one of the first uh, guys or groups or teams to uh, to start working on Tesla's third party is somewhere in Quebec. Oh, because they they put together like a, a three motor or four motor Tesla or something like that. Who? Vinfast. Vinfast is uh, there's a new Vinfast flagship store that's opened in uh, opened in Toronto oh, okay. and these are electric cars now I don't I don't know the full story behind them but uh, elegantly and simply crafted by Pininfarina so, oh wow so so um, yeah they're not cheap <laughs> there's nothing che like there's nothing cheap about this car but mm -hmm. you know it, it looks good, it looks good. Yeah, I, I don't know uh, I'm just saying like these stuff like that is popping up and yeah they're yeah. gonna give Tesla a run for their money but they're all going to have problems. They're all new manufacturers. They're all brand new manufactured cars. Yeah. And we're going to see problems with them, just like we saw with first year Teslas and so on. You know, be problems with that quality control, fit, 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 fit. Your cars being assembled in a tent in the middle of the <laughs> desert somewhere. But Lucid right? had been around for <laughs> yeah. a little while. I think the the Lucid Air, which is the first big flagship model, it came out two years ago or something. Yeah. And it's a bunch of former Tesla engineers, if I recall. Yeah. If it's not, I'll mention it. I, I think it was for them, and then uh, the, there was the... Oh, where you go? All right. To be continued. To be continued.